Hello there freaks and geeks, welcome to Up Your Geek Spotlight, where we shine a light on the creators and stories that are pushing the boundaries of geek pop culture and entertainment. I'm your host, Lou Lamar Booker, and on today's show, we're diving into the shadows and behind the scenes magic of the upcoming Netflix series, House of Ninjas. A captivating mix of action, family drama, and hidden secrets, this series resurrects the ancient art of ninjutsu in a modern day setting, revealing a tale of a once formidable ninja family that are drawn back into the clandestine world they had left behind. Join us as we interview Kento Kaku, series creator and executive producer, and director David Boyle as we dive into the world of House of Ninjas. Thank you guys for coming on. Um, this is a show I call Up Your Geek Spotlight. Today's episode, we're going to be sitting down with Kento and Dave to to discuss the inspiration behind House of Ninjas, the adventures and hurdles translating such a dynamic concept onto the screen, and the personal odysseys they've navigated through the creation of this series. So join us, and thank you for those who are listening and watching as we dive into the heart of House of Ninjas and this story about the bonds that tie us and the secrets that define us and the shadows in which we move. Dave, Kento, thank you. My first question here, I'm going to start off with uh, Kento. Uh, inspiration behind the series. Uh, Kento, what initially sparked the idea for House of Ninjas during the coronavirus lockdown? And how did you envision blending the traditional aspects of ninja culture with modern day setting? So like you said, uh, I decided making this show in the COVID. And, uh, you know, maybe five years ago, when I went to ninja show with my kids, and uh, there are so many tourists and uh, children, and they're so excited. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's it. And uh, like uh, gradually, uh, Japanese are losing interest in ninja culture compared to, you know, foreign people. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring ninja culture to the world this time. So that's how. Hey, you have something to add? Yeah, no, I was, I was just going to say the, you know, it's been a little while since... Um, I, I, I mean, there have been a ton, a ton of ninja shows, a ton of ninja movies over the years. But I, I just, I felt like the thing that Kento and uh, kind of sort of realized was that there was like, there was real hunger out there for a new style of ninja show, like a new style of ninja movie. Because like the word ninja just kind of gets you, I mean... I don't know about you, but it just kind of gets me sort of excited. Like you imagine all kinds of possibilities and it's a very flexible genre. You know, you can use it to sort of explore like almost any kind of tone or anything. In Japan, it's a little unusual for actors to kind of develop their own projects. So it's, it's so for, for Kento has, has done something kind of, kind of rough revolutionary here, like sort of become like almost like, you know, sort of like Tom Cruise of Japan, like producing his own stuff, bringing his own, <laughs> his own like projects to, to life. But it all started with just, you know, going to, you know, like one of those ninja stunt shows with his kids and, and seeing how excited the foreign tourists there were getting about it. It was pretty cool. And I, and I got to to watch um, part of the series and I thought that um, it was I, I love the uh, the dynamic of the show. Um, and I love how it was, it's not like your typical ninja show. Um, it's, it's got this stories and, um, and it, it interweaves with, uh, like everyday life there. And, 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 and then there's this things, these things happening in the background. And, um, so it's pretty, it's a, it's a pretty cool way that the show was developed. Um, Dave, uh, um, for your process, creative process and cultural integration, um, you, coming from a Mormon upbringing and then immersing yourself in Japanese culture and ninja history for House of Ninjas, how did these diverse backgrounds influence your storytelling and direction for the series? I'm a big believer in, you know, like specificity in storytelling. Sometimes it's, it's sometimes when you're um, when you're working as a writer or something and people try to sort of uh, whether it's producers or whoever else try to push it. How do how do we make this like more broad? How do we make this, you know? appeal to more people and i find that you know, the more specific something gets then usually the more interesting and the more relatable it gets for for other people all around the world um so i think that you know the, the kind of thing that when when the this 
this project first kind of came my way. Like, would you be interested in working on a ninja, uh, like a ninja show? I think the first thing I thought was like, what's sort of the way, what's my way into the characters? How would I be able to, you know, how would I be able to kind of empathize with these, with these characters? How could I, how could I kind of, um, cause I, I always have to sort of write from, you, you know, a place of some, some place where I, I feel like I'm writing from a place of personal understanding. And, um, so I just kind of, you know, looking at sort of the, the kinds of rules and regulations that ninjas are faced with, like they have so many restrictions and, you know, they can't drink, they can't eat meat, all these kind of dietary lifestyle restrictions. they also have a lot of restrictions on dating and who they can fall in love with and when and et, et cetera, all that kind of thing. Um, and I, and I felt, you know, a certain kind of growing up Mormon, I, I sort of felt like, oh, I could sort of just imagine this ninja family as a Mormon family. And I feel like I could take a lot of inspiration from, you know, my, <laughs> my, my relatives and friends growing up and everything. Cause then within the family, everybody kind of has their own feelings about nin ninjutsu. Like uh, Kento's character, Haru, doesn't want anything to do with it anymore. His mom, Yoko, wants nothing more than to go back to it and be doing like exciting missions every night. And I feel like everybody can sort of understand, you know, that feeling of like your family has shared values, but you you maybe all have sort of a, a slightly different approach or slightly different feelings about whatever it is, whatever the the, the kind of culture that you that you grew up in. So that was sort of you know a jumping off point for me, and then doing a lot of research on um, actual ninja history and real ninja clans and trying to kind of pepper in references and imagining, okay, if this clan that you know, history sort of uh, recorded history for them ends in the 1600s sometime. If they continued all the way up until now, what would it look like and how would they sort of fit into modern, what kind of, what kind of mischief would they be up to in modern society? And that thinking of things that way got me really excited. You know, it got me excited to write. It got me excited to sort of just, you know, come up with all kind of, kinds of ideas. Um, and so that was, you know, and uh, Kento and I have like really similar tastes and the kind of things that we're into. So uh, bouncing ideas back and forth and, and kind of coming up with a, a story that, you know, push, pushed on that aspect of the characters, um, but also kept the fun of, you know, a ninja story was, uh, was, a, really, was a really, really great process. So Kento, uh, character development, uh, playing the role of Haru. Uh, so the kind-hearted second son of the Tawara clan presented a unique challenge. How did you prepare for this action-heavy role? especially considering it was your first and how did it affect your portrayal of Haru's character? So, ですね。どうなのかなって心配はしてたんですけど、実用的なアクション。本当にこう人を殺せるアクションをあのアクションコーディネーターのタブさんとずっと作っていきました。Um, regarding my character, honestly speaking, um, I was I basically sat through the process when we were working on the script. So, um, this character uh, came very uh, naturally to me because I really under the nature of the character, the emotions or the feelings that Haru had, they kind of like resided in me uh, because I was uh, going through the process together. So um, I was very worried that because this was my first time to experience and create uh, something from scratch together, but um, I understood his nature. So I really didn't have this prep uh, time for the character. I basically kind of sat through and, you know, I was with the character throughout the process in a way. And then for the action sequences, I started training six months uh, prior to uh, filming. And then 
what we aimed for was that we didn't want these flashy action sequences. Um, we basically wanted to uh, have these practical action where we could really uh, kill a person. So that was the type of action we wanted to uh, show. And our um, action uh, stunt coordinator, uh, Tabuchi-san, uh, worked with me for that, for pulling that off. Did a really great job. Uh, the scenes were really well done as well. Um, everything did look so so well shot. Speaks to Dave, your direction as well. No, I was lucky because it, he was doing all his own action. And uh, I mean, you... It was really, really amazing to watch how quickly he picks up on action choreography. You know, they would they would basically come up with it, it, occasionally, you know, it'd be an action practice and sort of watch, see him watch, you know, uh, some of the action team do something once, and then he would just go go in and do it perfectly. And so having you know having a leading having a leading man who was willing to put in the time to to do all that was was huge it was just huge and also you know since he was also um a, pr a producer a creator on the show um one of the things that he was always telling everybody is that you know the whole family is the main character of the show and so making sure that everybody in the family sort of had their moment to shine in the in the action space as well was a, a big priority for both of us so working in a non-english production right uh, so conducting the entire production in japanese without an interpreter is quite remarkable um, so what were some of the challenges you face and how did this decision enhance the collaborative process on set? I mean, yeah, he's he's already laughing, probably remembering <laughs> what it was like the first the first little while. I just I just really felt like, uh, you know, this is a this is a Japanese show. And I, I, I wanted to make sure that I was sort of that I was uh, keeping that in mind all the time. And I, I didn't want to feel like um everybody else was having to make accommodation for me i wanted to sort of bring what i bring to it as a director but without making everybody else kind of feel uh like they you know had one hand tied behind their back um i i just really felt like you know having an interpreter would sort of add one more step in the process and i felt like i could probably i, I could probably do okay um and i i, I felt like you know this is probably going to be okay and then like the first week, bef like the, the first week of rehearsals, I started to panic a little bit. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, maybe I made the wrong choice or something. But um, it's amazing when you're in sort of a sink or swim environment, how quickly, you know, your your sort of language ability, even if it's, you know, your second language and you're and you're not, you, you know, obviously not a native speaker or anything. Um, but then the other thing is, you know, we, we basically had best in class of everybody on on this show in terms of the the staff you know ev everybody top down it's just, just you know it's like a murderer's row um just an, an amazing amazing crew and uh I, I think they they were all they were very patient and kind and they also saw that i was making the effort to you know to learn all of the 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 proper kind of set lingo and everything is because it's like everyday conversation and then the the, the kind of the word usage on set is different no matter what language you work in and Japanese is no different so it took a little while to to sort of you know to sort of pick up on sort of like oh when I want this this is what I say <laughs> like this is this is the shorthand like that kind of thing you know and um and you know, I was I was learning new stuff the whole way through, but that became sort of that became a bonding experience for me and and the crew and the cast. And uh, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't have had it any other way. So it was definitely hard at first, but I think it was worth it. But right now, his Japanese is better than me. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. <laughs> um, so, so with House of Ninjas being your debut as a producer, um, how has this experience influenced your aspirations in the film and television industry? Um, are there more stories you wish to tell, particularly in a producing role? So, I hope so. Yeah. So, now, it's a lot of things. So, it's a lot of things that I've done a lot of things. But, it's a lot of things that I've done a lot of things. But, it's a lot of things that I've done a lot of things that I've done a lot of things. もう僕にない発想だったり、今まで見たことないストーリーを、うん、なんかまたどっかの機会で彼とまた作れたら
いいなと今思ってます。ぜひ。And after、uh, completing this show,、um, I learned so much、uh, from this experience and、uh, meeting with、uh, Dave. Uh, for this show was a huge,、uh, thing for me and seeing his creative process and, you know, seeing him coming up with these ideas that I could never imagine and,、uh, these stories. It was just wonderful. So I do hope to work with him again on something. Well, thank you guys. Um, I, I, I did, I did love, uh, the show. Um, I watched half of it and it was really brilliant. The, the, the scenes, the sights, the music. Um, you know, that, that would music play a significant role in this setting,、um, and set the tone for the series. And, and so that was really great. I thank you guys for coming on to Up Your Geek Spotlight.、Uh, check out House of Ninjas on Netflix, streaming February 15th. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Hello there, freaks and geeks. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Up Your Geek Spotlight. We hope you enjoyed this interview. If you'd like this video and would like to see more like it, grab that subscribe button, like and comment on the video, and follow us on all of our social media platforms. House of Ninjas, starring Kento Kaku and directed by David Boyle, premieres February 15th on Netflix. Check out the official trailer. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ